Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Femininja Project. And thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I have the most wonderful guest with me today. Full disclosure, he is a very dear friend of mine. He's an amazing person and a colleague. He's a fellow author. His name is Mike Jarek. And after spending almost 40 years in the corporate world, Mike went out on his own as an independent consultant, executive coach, and mentor for 20 years and has recently retired. He is the author of the book titled Extraordinary Lessons from an Ordinary Life. Mike's superpower is the ability to extract the most meaningful life lessons from the ordinary occurrences of day-to-day -day situations. And Mike has recently debunked the myth that you can't go home again. And he's going to tell us all about it. Mike, thank <coughs> you so much for being here and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. It's my pleasure. My honor. Yeah. Oh, it's my honor. I know we've gone through a lot of machinations to match our schedules and get you here on the show, and I'm so happy that we finally got it done. Okay. Well, it's good to be here. Well, so just tell us your story. Um, tell us about how you grew up, where you grew up, and the lifestyle that you had. It's okay. all start at, from the beginning. Okay. Let's we'll start at the beginning. Hop in the time machine, and we'll go backwards. I uh, born in Chicago, Illinois, and when I was five, about three months away from turning six, my family moved to a small town called Mundelein, Illinois, about 40 miles north of Chicago. And I was the, there were five children at the time, five boys then, and we ended up having 13 children, and I'm the third oldest of 13. We had six boys. And we had four girls, and then they had three more boys. <laughs> so I'm one of 13 children. And uh, it was a wonderful childhood, loving, big, loving family. I wouldn't trade anything for the childhood I had. But one thing that was understood was you want to have anything extra, and then you go earn it. So newspaper routes. I was a soda jerk in the local drugstore for three years before I graduated from high school, got out of high school, worked for about 15 months in a, a manufacturing firm about four months from our, four blocks from our house. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked in the shipping department, unloading, loading trucks and so on. And I made enough money to go off to Northern Illinois University. And of course I worked in every dish room of every dormitory there during my four years. And I worked for the Illinois Highway Department during the summers. Um, so that was, that's where I grew up. And uh, that's how I grew up. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a great beginning and a great grounding, really, uh, when I think back on it. I worked at that factory for that year plus. And I often say that I earned my first college degree during those 15 months in the factory because the day laborers have a way of teaching young guys about common sense and how to get from a to b in a straight line rather than a very crooked line so uh that was my first college degree working in that factory and i'm very fortunate for that uh, it's the book let's talk about it the book came to be i would I had the good fortune of being four blocks away. The typical day was I ran home in my white t-shirt and my blue jeans and I had lunch with my mom. She'd have a glass of milk and a sandwich waiting for me. And uh, one of the few moments where I actually had time with my mom alone and that was to value. Yeah, I'm sure that didn't happen very often in that your house. That did not happen very often at all. And uh, so I moved down my lunch and chat with her, and then I run back to the factory. Well, about three or four months into my stint, I ran home, I got caught in a rain a downpour. And I run in the house, I'm soaking wet. And there in the living room is the door-to-door -door salesman. Back then, he was called the Fuller Brush Man. Mm -hmm. And he sold every kind of household good you can think of door-to-door. -door. And I had obviously met and seen him before, but there he was in his raincoat, dripping water on a rug, my mother placing an order with him. And I, I'm a young kid out of high school, and I go, what? 
are you doing out going door to door in this rainstorm? Mm -hmm. And he said, Mike, when I wake up and I see a rainstorm or I see a snowstorm, I am the happiest man. I jump out of bed. I can't wait to go door to door. He said, why do you think that is? And of course, I didn't think fast enough. And I said, why? He said, because all of my customers are going to be at home. And of course, I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. And he said, you, you had the reaction of the typical salesperson, Mike. He said, they, they look at the storm and they go back to bed, wait for the sun to come out. Mm -hmm. I'm on the street as fast as I can get there. And he said, Mike, uh, you are what you think about. He said, so you have got to think positively. And that's the way I think. When you made a pessimist, he said, turn and run away as fast as you can. And, um, and then I went back to the factory. But that lesson, that mm -hmm. what I became, what I came to call later, the most, life's most brutal truths, you are what you think about. It's important. I consider it the most important lesson in my book when people press me on it. It's the first mm -hmm. lesson. The lessons kind of run chronological. But it's the important lesson because it turned on my mental radar mm -hmm. to begin scanning because out of nowhere, on a downpour of rain, I run home and I meet this fellow who says, tells me this most deep truth about life and how to be, your attitude, the importance of it. And, and you know, I might have been a, you know, a sunny person anyway. My wife says I have great brain chemistry. Maybe that I would have ended up this way anyway, but I will never know. But I know that that had such an impact on me, but it also made me realize from out of nowhere, from out of nowhere, an incident, a moment, a fleeting moment in time, you can learn great lessons, truths, really. And the reason I learned many more as I went through life is because of him, because, because out of nowhere, there he was with this unbelievable truth. And things happened in the plant. I went to school, things happened. Uh, graduated, got married, married my high school sweetheart. My fellow stole a jerk at the high school. We've been married 56 years this June. Congratulations. Marcia, my best friend, Marsha. And, um, and life went on. And uh, kids got, we had a daughter, we had a son. They both got married. Daughter had two sons. My son had three sons. We end up with five grandsons. And I'm having one of these typical coffees with an executive back in April of 2011, mm -hmm. and he's writing, I'm talking, and telling my stories and my axioms, and uh, Cullen says, boy, Mike, you, you have a lot to say, and I said, well, thanks, Cullen, and we walked out, <laughs> and I'm walking to my car, and I just, I froze. I said, Mike, you've got five grandsons. Mm -hmm. You have got to get these lessons, these truths, these stories out of your head finally and uh, get them down for them. Because how often, how many of us wish, gosh, I wish I had more time with my grandparents, my parents to talk mm -hmm. about their lives, what they went through, learn from them, and then they're gone and it's too late. Mm -hmm. And so I dedicated my, I was going to do a Word document put it all down in a Word document. I was down in my office typing away and Marsha would say, are you gonna to eat today? I said, no, I'm on a roll. I gotta get this out of my head. And I thought I'd send the Word document to my son and my daughter and say, save it for when the boys get older. And, uh, but I had a few people say, no, Mike, you, these stories of yours, these lessons of yours, I think you should share that with more than just your grandsons and your family. And it became a book. It became a book, and I found a, I found a, a writer up in Minneapolis, the brother of a good friend, mm -hmm. and I was so glad because I, I wanted a writer who I could talk to and bounce my thoughts off of, and 
make sure I was saying things in the right way or whatever. And I sent him my first Word document, which had probably a good dozen or so lessons in it. And my title, working title, was A Life of Lessons. And I'll try to tell you this without getting too emotional, but Drew called me, Cheryl, mm -hmm. and he said, Mike, I've got a different title for your book. And I said, what's that? He said, Mike, these lessons are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And so he said, the title of your book is going to be Extraordinary Lessons from an Ordinary Life. And of course, I said, Drew, my gosh, what a title. And it became the title of the book. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's a great title. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Uh, I'm as, uh, you know, my ordinary life. I'm as ordinary a person as you'll ever meet. And yet, extraordinary things I've learned. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I talked recently. I had a little talk with my dentist and his staff. He asked if I would come and talk. Wow. And I told him, I told him my golden principle is pay the golden rule. My life's golden rule, pay attention. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, pay attention. Because the, the ordinary, as quiet as it is, as simple as it might be, contains very extraordinary things mm -hmm. if you pay attention. And I learned to pay attention. And so I learned a lot of great lessons and, mm -hmm. and things that have guided me in my life. And now, of course, my grandsons are 21, 20, and 16 years old. And we sat around and they read the book and talked about the various lessons. And mm -hmm. they're starting to say, Grandpa, this happened to me today. And it reminded me of what you said about you know, this or that. And so, you know, how fortunate I am that, mm -hmm. that well, it's come all that full circle like that for me. I have just a few questions for you. Oh, sure, sure. The first one is, so prior to um, writing that Word document, that first, basically it was the first draft of your book, right. uh -huh. you had all those lessons in your head. Oh, is that I correct? Had. In my head. I had, when I, in the, in the age of uh, Word documents and the computer, I began, a I put a document up on, I saved the document. I called it Mike's Recurring Themes. And I just put uh, bullet points. And I would put, you are what you think about. Knowing the right moment. Um, when things are going your way, they are. Go to the pain. Uh, begin at the end. I, I just had these one. And so when the book idea came, or the word document, I, I had this document called Mike's Recurring Themes. And all I needed was a, that little three or four word dot point, bullet point, and that triggered all mm -hmm. everything. That I one little it. prompt. That one little prompt, I could go back in time and relive it to its... So, okay, let me just, um, I want to okay. just stop you for an, another moment. Just for the listeners, I think that this is a really important message um, that if you have these incredible epiphanies, they don't even have to be incredible epiphanies, but any of these thoughts or ideas that you do have randomly during the day, just jot them down. It's so important to either keep a journal or some sort of notebook. And even if it seems like it's a silly, you know, little phrase, write it down because you never know how much of an impact that's going to have not only on your life, but the lives of others. And we're definitely going to get into that later because uh, the story just continues to snowball and build. But the other thing that, oh, I'm getting chills just thinking about it, is your door-to-door uh, -door salesman. That one conversation that you had with him, if he could have known what an impact it would have on you and on the course of your life. Yes. I mean, wouldn't that be an amazing thing to know that that one little conversation just shaped somebody's life forever? Yeah. And it, it's what drives me to do some of the things we'll talk about today, because you don't know. You, you don't know the impact that you might have. Mm -hmm. So uh, my grandson says, Grandpa talks to everybody. Well, why wouldn't I talk to everybody? Because you, you know, there aren't, you know, the old phrase, there are no coincidences in life. So why wouldn't I talk to everybody? Because you just don't know. And uh, 
I keep going because if you can touch one life, wh mm -hmm. why not step out, step out of your uh, comfort zone? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, some years ago, seeing the way I sort of take on life, if you will, she goes, Dad, are you, are you afraid of anything? And I said, well, Jennifer, I said, let's start with what I'm not afraid of. Mm. I'm not afraid of, I'm not afraid of rejection. I'm not afraid of being embarrassed. I'm not afraid of feeling awkward. I'm not afraid of being unprepared. Um, I'm not afraid of any of those things. What I'm afraid of is I'm afraid to be hesitant. Mm. I'm afraid of being hesitant. Mm. And because I was hesitant, I didn't meet Cheryl Iloff when I could have met her. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't say something I should have said to somebody. I didn't achieve something that I had a chance to achieve. And, and on the list goes, you know. So, you know, Woody Allen's, it's in my book, 80% of success is just showing up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up, you know, whether I'm ready or not. I'm going to show up because uh, I don't. To, to go back and say, oh, Mike, you, you hesitated. You didn't show up and, oh, what, what you might, the person you might have met, the impact you might have had, show up. Maybe you're not fully ready, but show up. Cheryl Iloff wants to do a podcast. Well, show up, you know. <laughs> That's just, what, anyway. Um, okay, I want to interject too, but... just to um, let the audience know, but they probably have figured this out by now, that yes, Mike is a talker. And yes, he will talk to anyone and everyone. And I know this because I have been out to breakfast and lunch with him many, many times. And uh, yeah. And the other thing about Mike is that this positive energy, this sunny disposition, he is pretty much like this all the time. I have never seen him otherwise. Well, thanks. Hey. Uh, like I say, maybe it's my brain chemistry, like Marsha says, but at this point, there's so much to look back on and feel good about. Why Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I be mm -hmm. positive? Why wouldn't I be sunny? You know? yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the book then. When the book was published and when what year did it get published? It came out in the fall as a, a Kindle book on Amazon in the fall of 2011. 2011. Okay. Yeah. And what was that like to, I mean, because it's a really crazy experience to touch and, and hold your own book that you created for the first time. And especially because your cover is very special and you can tell us about it. And then I'm going to have you actually just hold your book up. So okay. the people who are watching this on YouTube can see the cover of the book. Well, you know, it came out as an ebook, and mm -hmm. of course, it occurred to me. Well, let's see. I can't, I can't sign an ebook and give it to my grandsons. So we need to have a, uh, a hard copy. And we came to the beach on Hilton Head, and I had this notion of a picture: me and the five boys looking out at the ocean. And I guess I can pick it up now. Mm. And so is this looking okay to you? It looks okay. Just a little bit closer to the center. Yes. Yeah, so because you were cutting yourself off and I'm looking at this picture and I see a very tall man, very, very tall with these <laughs> cute little boys. And you're really not that tall of a person, are you? Especially well, compared to those boys now. I do like this cover because I look like I'm 6'3". Yes, you cover. do. But uh, actually <laughs> now... I am the shortest of all those people. <laughs> they are all taller than I am now. I have to say, and I'm, oh, and I'm you... about five, I'm about five eight, and they're all tall, towering over me. So. And you know, I didn't realize when I saw it just this last time. It's the subtitle I think that is just as compelling: "Simple Insights for a Better Life." Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. It's beautiful. And and I love the fact that the boys, all of them now tower over you. <laughs> yeah, they do. And uh, I'm happy for that too. You know? <laughs> and they love to get next to me and go, you know, put their hand over their <laughs> hand. Um, and then uh, 
So it came out in the fall of 2011. Mm -hmm. And then, you know how it is, Cheryl, on Amazon, you get these reviews and you always get like an email ping that another review went up. Well, in 2017, I got the ping and a new review came up. And it was from a lady that I'll, I'll never know who she is, where she's from, but she wrote a review, it was in June. And she said, this book should be given to every graduate to help them prepare for life and what they're gonna face with. And that, that motivated me to, to write a, a journal, a diary. You talked earlier about the importance of writing down, things happen. So I created the journal edition of the book. Mm. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I may have that handy. Yeah, I do. I will show you the cover of the journal edition. Oh, wow. So that's the journal edition of the book. And it's- That's beautiful. And like a journal, uh, you can you can write it. after the lessons. There are questions and prompts mm -hmm. to have you, uh, you know, write write down your thoughts and so on. So you actually can turn it into your own journal, your own diary, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that uh, so that's been actually quite popular. And uh, back at Northern Illinois University, they've given uh, for the last three four years they they give. I send them copies and they give copies to all the graduates of the wow. management department in the business school. So anyway, so I, there is that journal edition as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's taken me a little book, you know, it's taken me on a whole life journey all by itself. And uh, that's been that's been great. OK, so we're going to go back and talk about how this idea for the podcast came about. Um, because you and I were having breakfast. Oh my goodness, I have no idea when it was. It was probably sometime this summer, maybe it was last spring or summer. And mm. you told me about an invitation that you received. Actually, you yeah. were going back for your class reunion. I was. I went back to Mundelein High School for our class reunion in June. I had lost a dear friend the December before. And that I'd gone back to first grade with. And and uh, we were the first graduating class of Mundelein High School because Mundelein got big enough. They built their own high school. We all moved over from the other town, mm -hmm. those of us who lived in Mundelein. So we were the first graduating class. And last June was our 60th anniversary of our graduation. And when Tony passed away, I thought, OK, we have to, we have to do this. We have to have it. And I spearheaded two gals that go back with me to first grade who still live in that area. I volunteered them to join me and they did. And we made it happen at, uh, at the end of June of last year, we had our class reunion and about 35 classmates showed up and, and we had a grand time and we toured the school, which is now there's four additional buildings built onto that school. Wow. Then when we were there, but. Oh, it was a great, it was a great weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so happy that, you know, I had the idea and we made it happen. Everybody had a great time. And I came home and about two weeks later, I got a phone call from the superintendent. And he said that one of those classmates of mine that I went back to first grade with, Maxine, uh, had given them a copy of my book and they had read it. And they said, Mike, you've got to come back to the high school and talk to the students. And <laughs> yeah, I thought, back to my high school to talk to students, you know, yeah. And I'm going back to Illinois and during the winter. I'm going to go, I mean, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> I think those I, are the words that no adult really wants to hear is, we want you to come back to high school. Yeah, well, back to high school. I said, well, uh, to make a long story short, they, I didn't go back just to talk to one class. I went back to spend the day there and there's eight periods in the day. And one of them is a lunch period, but otherwise they put me in a large room and I talked to students for seven periods. And 
Um, they put me in a large room. I had a place to sit. I also had a place to stand with a microphone that I could sit down with. And uh, off we went. And the classes, every period, I had students in a personal finance class, which I was very impressed that freshmen through senior, they take mm -hmm. personal finance. And I had uh, kids from a marketing class came, a speech class, drama, entrepreneurship, internship, uh, a variety of classes. And I knew all the classes ahead of time so I could come up with the key messages I wanted for each mm -hmm. of the classes. And um, so I went back and I walked into the high school um, and there was a big poster with my picture. Welcome, Mike Jack. And you were a rock I, star. I think I got the feeling of how a rock star might be treated because people came rushing up to me and they took pictures with me by the poster. And, and uh, you know, they were like very excited and, and made me feel pretty good. And then I got in my room and, and on we went. And I tell you, Cheryl, uh, what can I say? It was one of the most rewarding, amazing days of my life. And the kids were quiet. You know, I got a few questions. We always had time for questions. Mm -hmm. I got a few questions, but mostly they were quiet. Sometimes uh, a kid or two would come up chat with me after I was done and they mm -hmm. talking. Um, there was one thing that I said to all, to all the personal finance classes. I always said, listen, if I could only say one thing, what would it be? I like to think of those terms when I talk to somebody. If I only got to say one thing, what, what would I want? So I, I told them, and it's the title of a lesson, money equals choices, not things. Mm -hmm. And that's the one Whenever I said that, the heads would go down and they would write that down. And I saw it on the first class. And then I enjoyed for all the other periods saying that and watching the heads go down. And they, that was the one thing they would write down. The money equals choices, not things. That really rang a bell with them. In any case, uh, I left, you know, we'll go back to the school, but. You know, I left kind of wondering, did I, as we talked about, did I have an impact? Did I touch anybody? And then the, then the email started coming the day that afterwards from the teachers the next day, the next day, the next day. Mike, you should have seen these kids. They came to class the next day, and that's all they wanted to talk about. You said this, and you said that. And, well, can we talk about this? And, we, and you know, I was... <laughs> I was blown away because you wondered, and I wondered, did I did I touch him? Did I reach him? And uh, I did, I did. And so this is why, this is why at the age of almost seventy nine, you know, you do something like that because uh, it's it's pretty special. I didn't know you were almost seventy nine. I thought you were a few years, quite a few years younger than that. I thought I was thinking early seventies. Apparently, I can't do math very well because I probably would have figured out, um, you know, when you graduated and it was sixty years later. But wow, you look fantastic. <laughs> well, I always tell people I have the advantage of being highly immature, and that's very helpful uh, as you get See. older. <laughs> but anyway, that was a it was a great experience, and I took those two classmates and their husbands out to dinner that night. And uh, I got there early to the rest, best restaurant in Mundelein, got there early. I told the owner, listen, just one check, bring me the check. And uh, the assistant superintendent came and joined us for dinner. So it came time for the check and the owner comes walking up. He said, I have a message. Here we go, I'm gonna get choked up again. I had a message from the <laughs> superintendent of the school. Your entire meal is paid for by the school. Wow. And I go, wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So you talk about you can't go back home again. Oh, yes, you can. You can go back home again and, you know, love every minute of it. Love and you can go minute. home in a big way. Home in a big way. And, you know, that morning I, I left the hotel a little extra early. 
I drove by my house, still there, 10 South Seymour. I stopped. I parked across the street. And I just looked at my house. I reflected, thought back. <laughs> then I drove to Marcia's house, where she lived about five, six blocks away. And I looked at her house for a while and reflected. I drove by the, it's not the drugstore anymore, it's a health food store, but I drove by the drugstore that we worked together at. And then I slowly made my way to the high school. And it was, it was a great thing for me to do. It, it just grounded me and it got me ready for the day that I was about to have. And yeah, it was a great, it was an amazing about 48 hours in total and I was back on a plane back home uh it was good so I mean I, I just to, to me it's almost like a it's almost like one of those miracle stories or you know um things that you you never expect to happen you wrote one book out of the ideas in your head that first started coming up when as you said um the salesman what was it he woke up or or activated your mental radar yes yeah I, that's i cuz i you I'd start often, scanning I, I would, yeah i would often think how did you remember that why why did that stay with you all these years mm -hmm. you know and so i said well i give credit to the door to door salesman it's like the radar started beep beep, beep. <laughs> you know things would things would happen to me that i would mm -hmm. take in that somebody else might just walk on by, walk right. on by. Yeah. And now the you know, book the, is the book is also available on Audible. So you, you have an audio book and you are the one that narrated it yourself, which is really impressive for several reasons. But I think the most um, significant reason is because you had prior to doing the uh, recording for your audiobook, you had what you refer to as a medical adventure. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I yeah. think, okay, so this is just another reflection of, um, for the audience, Mike's positive uh, outlook on everything that he's faced with, because to uh, call what he went through a medical adventure is truly courageous. Well, uh, thanks. I, um, yeah, three years ago, this January, past January, I had five and a half hours of surgery on my throat and my neck uh, due to throat cancer, which was discovered. And I, I wrote an article for the local town magazine. I, I titled it, My Ride on the Sea Train. And one of the lessons there uh, is that you pay attention to your body. Uh, it does send you, as you know, given your martial art experience, it sends you messages. And I had an irritation in my throat for several months, not a sore throat, but an irritation. I sucked on lozenges all the time. And I decided, oh, this isn't right. And I went to my doctor and he sent me, and now the doctor and the rest is history. I took a biopsy and I had uh, uh, can cancer on my throat, my tonsil. But the good news is we got it in time. It was all very located there. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a fair amount of uh, scar tissue on the left side of the throat. But, you know, uh, I had a raspy throat to begin with, so I got my raspy yes, throat. Yes, you did. It was there. a very, I, I can't remember the name. Was it Mel Torme? Mel, my Mel Torme voice, the London Fog. Uh, <laughs> for those who might remember Mel Torme. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I got scan and there it was very located and I didn't um, a surgeon says I'm in the three percent club mm -hmm. which is the club that didn't need chemotherapy or radiation wow and I I attend a cancer support group and I sit around a table sometimes with 15 20 other people that have all had throat uh, cancer of one kind or another and they all had radiation and what radiation does to the throat is not is not a good thing. So uh, there again, you know, very lucky. Uh, how lucky am I that I didn't that the surgery got it all, and I've got one more PET scan in May, at the end of May. And if it's good, the surgeon says we say goodbye to each other. 
mm-hmm. which I said to him, Doc, I don't want to say goodbye to you. I have a great team of people. But he says, no, you're in the 3% club and we'll say goodbye to each other uh, if everything stays the way it's been. I've had regular scans and checkups. And, and, uh, and you know, back to my rosy personality, I actually, I fooled myself. And I, he says, I fooled him too. And they sent me home after six days. And my wife, the nurse practitioner, after three days, she said, Buster, you're not thriving. We're going back. And she took me to the ER and back up to the cancer floor. Uh, and I was there for another 10 days. Wow. With the feeding, with the feeding tube in me and so on. And Dr. Nemechek says, Mike, you, you and those rosy cheeks and that positive attitude, darn it. We thought you were ready to go home and you weren't. So uh, I finally went home. I had a feeding tube in me for about three weeks at home. But oh. uh, but I, that was a nurse. I guess how I got the nourishment I needed and mm-hmm. uh, came back and, and here I am. <laughs> here I am. So question yeah, for you. The audio book was interesting. I, question for you, Mike. What was the life lesson yeah. there? <laughs> Try not to fool the medical professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be honest with yourself about yourself. That's one of the lessons. And I guess I, I wasn't, I was too anxious to get home, you know. <laughs> but, uh, well, the, the main lesson is listen to your body. And as I said in my article on writing the sea train is, people who say no news is good news, no, no. No news isn't good news. Uh, you need to know the news. It's not always easy to go get the news. Um, but I went and got the news and I did something about it. And it's a good thing I did. Yeah. Because if I if I was one of those people that said, well, I got an irritation, but I, I'm not going to see a doctor. I don't want to hear mm-hmm. any bad news. No, that wouldn't have been a good outcome for me. So no news is not good news. It's, when it comes to your health, check it, check Get your checkups. Check yourself out. Listen to your body, and uh, and do what do what. Be a good patient. Be a compliant patient, mm-hmm. and do what you need to do. And uh, you know, here I am. I'm playing the best golf of my life. Uh, I had my first hole in one after 54 years, and my second. When did you one, do that? Uh, July 27th. 2017, not that I would remember that day. Well, of course, yeah. Who would remember that? And then I had my second hole in one uh, in 21, February 2021, which is, what, 13 months after my surgery. So Mm -hmm. um, we push on, we push on, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And people like you in my life, how fortunate am I to know you and have people like you to meet with and, and uh, have friends like Oh, no, you're going to make me tear up. You're going to make me emotional. And, you know, I don't do emotions. <laughs> well, but it's true, you know. I, I'm fortunate. So that's why that's why I'm positive. I got great people in my life. So. And I do want to uh, let the listeners know that you you are my number one fan. <laughs> Because you always tell me that I'm your favorite ninja and oh, makes yes. me wonder how many ninjas that you know. And just, I want to remind you that we um, need to get together for another breakfast date soon. And it's your turn to buy next time. Yes. Uh, Le, Pe- Le Peep is calling us. I can, I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it peeping in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mike, this has been so wonderful talking to you and so amazing to hear your story. I never get tired of hearing it. Um, and I'm still so excited. I'll just never forget sitting there across from you at La Peeps as you were telling me this story. And it was like, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that happened. And my first reaction was, I have got to get you on the show. You have got to come on the Feminine Project and talk about this. And yeah. at first you were like, are you really sure? And it's like, oh, trust me, you really need to do it. So I'm glad we <laughs> finally got it done. Yeah, I'm glad we did too. Um, and then uh, now tell tell the audience where they can find your book. Well, you can go on Amazon and on Amazon, you'll you'll see the, the original edition. You'll see the journal edition. You'll see mm-hmm. the 
uh, e-Kindle, the ebook edition. You also there's a link also to get the Audible edition, <laughs> um, and uh, so that's that's Amazon's Amazon's the source for a lot of things these days, and that's where you'll find the extraordinary lessons from an ordinary life. And, mm -hmm. uh, if you gain gain some insight from it, uh, this ordinary man says thank you very much, and you're you're a friend and of mine. If anybody, uh, the listeners, if they're interested in reaching out to you, if they want, if they have questions about the book or observations about the book, or if there's another high school around there who would like to <laughs> talk to you or you have you come and present to their school, um, how can people get a hold of you? Well, I'm very much a 24 seven kind of guy and email is the best route. And my email is all lowercase. It's mm. J-A-R-O-C-H M-M Jarek at Comcast.net so, mm -hmm. And I will have it. your email um, address if that's okay with you. I'm going to have it in the show notes so people can, okay. um, it's going to be there for forever and ever. And that's I will fine. also have the link to your book in the show notes as well so people okay. can find that. That's fine. And I, I just one more thing I wanted to say is um, when you were talking about I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was the woman who wrote the um, review for you on Amazon yeah, that yeah. said every graduate should get this book. Yeah. And I would like to say, I don't think so. I think kids should get this book like at the beginning of high school, not at the end, or maybe mm -hmm. even in middle school might be a little bit too early. I don't know. But I think it would be a really good thing if kids um, could start thinking about these things and start looking at the world in a different way and how extraordinary things can come out of very simple everyday yeah. situations. I got, I got a, speaking of emails, I got an email from a junior at Northern Illinois University and he had read the book. It was an extraordinary review of the book. But one of the things he said was, because um, you, you wonder if over time these things are still would still resonate with young people. Uh, right. But he said, he said, your these lessons are lessons of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am gonna carry your book with me throughout my life so I can always go back to it. Oh. And so this is a junior a finance major at Northern Illinois. And so uh, it's too uh, gloating to say they're timeless, but but you're right. Uh, young people are still coming. The high school students, their reaction after, after I left, days after I left. Um, so yes, um, they still make sense. And so it makes me, press on it makes me press mm -hmm. on yeah. um and i will have to say that yes i do believe it's timeless <laughs> well thank you thank you for your generosity cheryl oh uh, well thank you for being my number one fan i really appreciate that of all the ninjas i know you're definitely my favorite <laughs> and i've asked you this before how many ninjas do you know uh one but I'm sure I'll need another one someday. Yeah. But I've set the bar really high for any well, the yeah. next one that comes along. Meet, I don't need to meet any more. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, Mike, thank you so much again for being on the show. And before we wrap up, I just want to ask, you know, is there one last um, message or pearl of wisdom or anything that you would like to share with the audience before we sign off? No, I would, I would just go back to uh, pay attention. Pay attention to the ordinary things that happen to you because Within the ordinary lives, oftentimes some very extraordinary, very extraordinary things. So just mm -hmm. Mike's golden rule for the day, pay attention. Mm -hmm. And you have certainly proved that all to be true. Well, thank you. And we will look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everybody, thank you so much for listening. This is um, oh, one of my favorite episodes. It is an extraordinary episode, not to overuse that word. And please do share it with all of your friends. 
share it with your high schoolers, maybe even just share some of the principles that Mike's already talked about with your junior high students, or I guess they don't say junior high anymore, I'm dating myself, your uh, middle schoolers, even your younger children and start instilling some of these ideas and help them help them start to just really wake up and uh, get that mental mental radar going and start looking mm -hmm. for the really, really extraordinary lessons that life has to have. And I really appreciate you listening as always. And do check out Mike's book. Go on to Amazon and uh, check it out. I think you'll be very impressed. I have a copy. It's right over there in the corner. And so that is the way of the Femininja.